Okay, we're looking at a 2002 Ford Escape, and this thing's got the three liter dual overhead cam V6 in it. Um, check engine lights on, engine seems to run fine. We have done a key on engine off, key on engine running test, and we just finished the key on engine running. And what we've got here are a couple of codes. P1000 we can ignore, we're not going to worry about that. The 1127 we're not going to worry about, 1650 we're not going to worry about. Those are all related to the fact that we ran the Keon engine running test without getting the engine warmed up and we didn't turn the steering wheel hard enough. But anyway, so we're not going to worry about those. But let's focus on these other codes. P0141 and P0161. Okay, P0141 is the HO2SHTR12, which is Heated O2 sensor heater, bank one sensor two heater circuit malfunction. Okay, this DTC may be caused by open or grounded circuit. Okay, shorted a uh, shorted sensor, heater wire, all that stuff. The other one is the same thing, but it is for bank two sensor two. So neither one of the O2 sensor heaters are working in these two things. Um, and what we want to do is we want to look at we want to look at, uh, first of all, we're going to go to our PIDs. So let's go to our data logger. And it should be all set up. Let's see, engine. We're using the Ford IDS. Aftermarket scan tools will be pretty similar for this kind of stuff. There's nothing too fancy here. Now there's some things we want to turn on and some things we want to turn off. I am interested in looking at some O2 sensor control or heater control PIDs. And generally speaking, most cars nowadays have these things. So if we look down through here, okay, here we go. So we want heater 1-1 one, one mode, which is heater bank 1 sensor 1, whether it's on or off. Heater bank 1 sensor 2 on or off. Heater bank two sensor one on or off, and heater bank two sensor two on or off. And then we want to look at current. Let's see, so heater, let's see, that is heater current monitor, bank one sensor one, heater current monitor, bank one sensor two, heater current monitor, bank two sensor one, bank two sensor two. So we want to turn all those off. I'm going to turn off a few of these other ones that are going to show up where we don't want them. Okay, let's go down here and let's look at these PIDs. So up there across the top, as soon as it catches up. Okay, we've got, we're missing something. Let me go back real quick. Let's turn off that fuel system closed loop. Turn that off. And what are we missing? Maybe that was all. Okay, that's what we want. Okay, so heater one and heater two, they're pulsing off and on, which is kind of what they do. Heater, both are the, I should say, both the heaters for the upstream O2 sensors are switching off and on. At least that tells us the computer's commanding them. Downstream O2 sensors are being commanded. Okay, now if we go over and we look at our heater controls, uh, or our current, you can see sensor, both the upstream sensors are both running 1.15 amps. That looks really good. Uh, bank 1 sensor 2 is at 0 and bank 2 sensor 2 is 656 milliamps which ain't going to cut it. That really ought to be at least as high as the upstream. It's probably a little higher because it's not being switched off and on like the other ones. Um, and so they'll, it, might, it may run higher current um, in order to warm the downstream up a little quicker because being downstream it's going to take longer to just naturally warm up on their own. Eventually, when the engine runs hot enough, the O2 sensors will maintain a good temperature on their own. But anyway, this is, uh, this is what we're dealing with. So what we need to find out is we need to find out, are the downstream O2 sensors getting power? Um, is the computer able to command them? And, and all that kind of stuff. So let's, uh, let's go to, we could go to the computer first or we can go and look at the O2 sensors first. It doesn't really matter. On this vehicle, the computer is up top right at right at the top of the firewall underneath the cowl i think we'll go there first because it's just so easy to go there so let's do that all right we are at the pcm and you can see how easy it is to get to 
Um, all we had to do is we had to pull off the little protective cover. That's real easy. Don't you love it when stuff is accessible? It makes it so easy. Now, if we had an Eek 5 breakout box, we could hook that up and that would make it really slick for doing what we're doing here. But um, we don't have one of those laying around. We've got Eek 3 and 4, but no 5, which is just fine. Because by the time we get to Eek 5, we shouldn't have to use a breakout box much. Anyway, here we are. Um, I've got a, you can see I've got a T-pin back probing. Of course, okay, back probing. We're not piercing wire insulation. We are back probing the connector. And we are hooked up to bank one sensor two. The key is on, and you can see we have voltage there. Okay, now before we did any of this, I, I, I should mention that we did check the fuse. Okay, because these O2 sensor heaters are powered directly off of a fuse in the, in the fuse box over here. So the fuse is good. All right, so we covered those bases. Now we, we should have probably known the fuse was good, or, you know, we. We would have known that going in because of the fact that in our PIDs we did see that current was flowing, at least to the upstream O2 sensor. So that's kind of a clue that, yeah, the fuse is probably good, but it doesn't hurt to double check. So we did that. So here we are now. We've got 12.5 volts, which is battery voltage on our, that's sensor two. Let's go check out uh, bank one, sensor one. Okay, 12.5 volts, bank one, sensor one. And then this is bank one, sensor two. We've got nothing. Bank two sensor two, we've got nothing. Now, the reason that we are checking power here and we're seeing power is if we, we look on our diagram, you can see that we've got power coming, the fuse is on another diagram, comes over in here, there's a splice, power feeds down to every single one of these, these heaters, then goes through back up to our, our powertrain control module right, right here. Okay, so we should have voltage 93, 94, 95, and 96, which are, those are the pins we're looking at. With the key on engine off, we should have voltage at every single one of those. Um, and uh, you might say, but we're checking voltage after the load. How do we see voltage there? Well, current's not flowing because the key is not, or the engine's not running. So voltage does not drop in our load on the circuit until the engine is running. So the power, what that means is that um, when we start the engine, then we should see we should see the power that's here, um, we'll see it blink or it'll switch on, off, on, off, on, off because that's what our PIDs were showing us for the upstream O2 sensors. And then these two, you know, you should have 12 volts and it should go to, to no volts. Um, but I don't know that we necessarily need to do that, but we could just for the fun of it. Now if we go back to our scan tool and you look up here at these PIDs, okay, for all of our heaters, they're all off. They're all showing zero amps because they don't turn on until the engine runs. So let's, let's start the engine and see what happens. I can reach through here. Now we'll go back up to here. Okay, so we still have nothing on that downstream O2 sensor. Nothing on that downstream O2 sensor. And here we've got our voltage switching. On this nifty little voltmeter, we can, we can graph that. So there you can see it switching off and on. So that one's working just fine. Let's go over to the other one. Okay, that one is also working just fine. So what I'm thinking now, what I'm thinking is that there were we're missing our we're missing our path for power, so we need to go down to the O2 sensors, and we need to look look at the 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 two downstream O2 sensor connectors and check for power down there. What we should have is we should have voltage going into the sensor with the key on, engine off, and we should have voltage coming out of the sensor because remember how we were able to see it up here? Okay. Well, we're going to shut the engine off. We're going to go down below. And we're going to check the power at those connectors. And we're going to find, we should, there should be two wires down there that have 12 volts when the key is on and the engine is off. If we have one wire that has power, then what that tells us is the O2 sensor itself, the heater, is bad. If we have uh, no battery voltage on any of the wires, then that tells us that there must be a bad splice or a break in the wire 
from wherever it is that those four heater power supply wires come together. Um, there may be a splice where the two downstream O2 sensor power feed wires come off and maybe it's bad or, or something like that. Um, and honestly, at this point, that seems a little more likely. Is it possible to have two bad downstream O2 sensors? Yeah, it's definitely possible. We, don't, we, we have no idea what the history of this vehicle is, and it's possible that they've been driving around this way for, for miles and miles and miles. I mean, this car's got like 180,000 miles on it. So we're gonna, go, uh, we're gonna go down underneath and we're gonna look at voltages at the sensors, and then we'll, we'll see what we can see from there. Okay, let's check our voltages down here at these sensors as well. So we've got, this one right here is our upstream, and this one's our downstream. And all the upstreams are working fine because the codes don't relate to that. It's to both the downstream. So this is, this is one of them. Um, but anyway, these wires here, the two white wires are your power and ground for the heater. And this one over here has two white wires also that are power and ground for the heater. Okay, so we're gonna check those. I've got my meter down there. And we should, with the key on, engine off, you should have power on both of the white wires. Both of them. So, checking the top one first. Okay. We have power coming down to the heater. Or, at least on one of the white wires. Now we'll check the second one. And there's nothing. Nothing. Go back and check it again. Yep, power. Nothing. And just to make sure I'm not a liar, let's check them both on this one because we know it's working properly. So voltage on one of the white wires. And voltage on the second white wire. Okay, so what that tells me is that it's very possible this O2 sensor is bad. Now, here's the funny thing about this O2 sensor. It's new. It's not that old. I mean, we don't know how old. We don't know the history on this vehicle, but it's obvious this O2 sensor is not that old. Now, it looks like it's plugged in okay. You know, we can, we can pop it out, check the pins. That's always a good idea. Those look good in there. The other side of the connector, the, the pins all look fine. Pins look fine. So, kind of crazy, right? Well, like I said, new means new. New doesn't mean good. Now the other O2 sensor is this one right here. That one's definitely not new. But well, we can check the same thing with the power on the connector for it, which is right here. So if we check the power on the two white wires, let's do that. Okay, that one's got power. That one does not. So two bad O2 sensors. Yeah, I know on a 2002 Ford, there's probably some of you that are going, well, that's pretty normal. Yeah, I suppose it can be. Now why this, this new sensor went bad, who knows? But uh, it looks like this thing probably needs new O2 sensors. So I think that's what we'll, that's what we'll do for it. 